Welcome back everyone, it's Husa 57 here. We are back on Neverwinter on the Xbox One in Mod 9. And today I have for you my over 3k item level Control Wizard Pure DPS build. So I know you've been waiting for this build for a while. I'm going to give you a quick show of what the build can do and my stats. And then we're going to go in and actually explain about how the build works. So right off the bat, what we want to achieve with this build in this class is the maximum area of effect and damage over time that we can possibly do. I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration here for you know less than a minute uh, and basically show you what the build can do. Now these are just training dummies, but you can wipe literally all of their uh, HP. So these are not a accurate showing of the total amount of force that this character can do, but as you can see, you can pretty much destroy these. Now a quick look at my stats. As you see, I get up to 35k power, 20k crit, 7k armor pen, and these stats can get better. Uh, this gives me a 79.1% hit chance, critical hit chance, a 98.5% critical hit severity, 69.2% resistance ignored, 49.7% recharge speed with a 21.6% action point gain, and 30% damage resistance. Alright, with all these stats and everything, now I can actually go ahead and I'm just going to go to a different area real quick and then I will go into detail on how we actually build the control wizard. Alright, now that you've seen what the control wizard can do against some training dummies, keeping in mind that I do not have full end game gear. I have mid to late game gear, but not full end game. This class is designed with my specific play style in mind to be in the middle of all the enemies and just nuke mobs. It's also designed to do a good amount of damage to single target opponents like in boss fights and possibly in PvP, but for PvP you have to change around a few powers. So just a very quick disclaimer, this build I waited to release because it is meant for over 3k item level. The reason why I say over 3k item level is you need to have a certain amount of a couple base stats and you also need to have a little bit of currency because a few of the things that you need are going to be fairly expensive. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to start listing out everything that you need and you may want to take notes because this is going to be a little bit long. I'm going to cover everything in this video. To start with, as far as my character goes, I am a control wizard, I'm a spellstorm mage, that's the paragon path, not master of flame, and I am, as far as a race, you can call them demons or tieflings or thieflings, however you want to pronounce it, but I am a tiefling. That is pretty much the best race for a control wizard, at least a pure DPS build control wizard. The reason why I say that is you have the racial ability Blood Hunt, where you deal an additional 5% damage to targets below half health, and you have Infernal Wrath. When a target hits you, you have a 10% chance to apply Infernal Wrath to the attacker. The effect reduces the target's power by 5%. So it's kind of a nice little debuff, you could say. Now, starting out with my initial roll... And with this build, you're going to want to focus on Intelligence and Charisma, both stats as high as you can possibly get them. If you're using the Tiefling race, you're going to want to roll 20 Intelligence, 15 Charisma. You can also roll 18 Intelligence and 18 Charisma. That's a viable build with a little bit higher crit chance, but I like rolling the higher Intelligence for more bonus damage the crit chance I make up with gear. Wisdom is pretty much useless. Uh, we don't really need to throw points into it, so I don't recommend you focus on wisdom. All your points as you level up are going to be dumped into intelligence for damage bonus and recharge speed, and then charisma, which is going to give you critical hit chance, companion stat bonus, and combat advantage bonus. 
you can also use human for the wizard, but it doesn't work out as well. You do get three extra feet points. I don't think it's worthwhile over the loss of damage. So now that you see what your initial role should be and your race, the entire rest of the video is going to assume that you're using the tiefling or the demon race. What I'm going to show you is feats. These feats are different from my previous build for level 70 PvE DPS. That was for under 3k item level. Now that we're over 3k item level, I have changed the placement of several points. And we're going to cover heroics and then the paragon. In the paragon, not too much has changed. Really only the placement of about one point. And that's an optional point depending on your play style. Heroics, we have Tier 1. Starting out, we have Controlling Action. You generate up to 10% additional action points when using powers on a controlled target. Well, that's a okay one, but for this build, we only have 2 of 5 in that. So we're going to generate 4% additional action points. Weapon Mastery, increase your critical chance by up to 3%. We need as much crit chance as we can get, so that's a no-brainer, 3 of 3. Toughness, toughness you only need 2 of 3, which is going to give you an increase to your maximum hit points by 6%. If you put another point in there, you'd get a little bit more HP, but it's not really worth it. Moving into the second tier heroics, Fight On. I used to use this more, but... The cooldown reduction with recovery and everything is not worth it. It's a few tenths of a second on most encounter powers, so we skip that. 0 of 5. Battle-wise, you generate less threat. Generating less threat is not going to help us at all. We generate a massive amount of threat in the middle of all enemies. So forget that one. 0 of 3. It's a waste feat. Wizard's Wrath. This is a very important feat. Some people overlook it. Some people don't like it. For this build, though, you pretty much have to use it. 3 of 3 in Wizard's Wrath for your area of effect powers deal an additional 3% more damage. Now, keep that in mind. You might want to write it down because it's going to get a little tricky with the feats later on. Tier 3, Heroics. Blightning Power. Your cold powers deal an additional up to 6% damage to targets affected by chill. I used to have a full 3 of 3 in that for my other build, my under 3k item level build. In this build, you're only going to put 2 of 3 into Blightning Power for an additional 4% damage with cold powers to targets affected by chill. Lightning Teleport is useless. You use 0 of 5 on that one. Now, Arcane Enhancement. Your Arcane powers deal up to an additional 3% more damage. That one's going to be 3 of 3. Now, we have the points set like that, and we have another 5 points left to go. I used to put, and it works out better if you have under 3k item level, that you put all 5 points into Learned Spellcaster. This one gives you an increased amount of bonus damage from Intelligence by up to 5%. However... Once we reach a certain stat level and have a certain amount of power, that is no longer the best way to go for DPS. Instead, what we're going to do is go down here to the bottom, which is Focused Wizardry. Your single target powers deal an additional 30% more damage, and your area of effect powers deal 10% less damage. If you're going to use this feat, you must put 3 of 3 points in it, otherwise it is useless. So the reason why you're doing that, I know everybody might be freaking out because we are a AoE build. Primarily all of our encounter powers and even one of our daily powers is an area of effect power. Don't worry about that too much. Our area of effect powers only lose 10% damage. Keeping in mind, we took Wizard's Wrath, which gives our area of effect powers 3% more additional damage therefore we're only losing seven percent damage on our area of effect powers but we also took arcane enhancement which gives our arcane powers an additional three percent more damage 
and our cold powers have an additional 4% damage. So across the board, we're really only looking at about a 4% damage loss on our encounter powers that are AoE. However, we gain 30% more damage to our single target powers. And some of the single target powers that we use are going to be Ice Knife, Disintegrate, and then the primary source of your damage, Storm Spell. All of those proc as single target powers, thus are increased by 30%. The last two points I've gone to putting in this uh, pre degestation or whatever you want to call it, where you and your allies gain up to an additional 3% stat ratings. Now, you only have two points left, and this is where, if you were human, you would be able to put a full three points in that and two points into Learned Spellcaster. However, we're not human, we're using Demon Rice. So the reason why I went with this, Learned Spellcaster is going to give you about 2.5% more bonus damage. Whereas with two points in the pre-degestation, pregestation, whatever you want to call it, with as much power as we have, around 30k procced, and keeping in mind we can get more power as we upgrade enchantments and get better gear, that's actually better. You get a higher damage bonus from it. You also gain more critical hit, armor pen, action point gain... Uh, regeneration, everything. That just helps your stats across the board. But it is only worth it if you have enough specifically power to actually make it more than a 2.5% damage bonus. Alright, go ahead and save that. That's your heroic. Now we're going to go into Paragon. Most of your primary Paragon is going to be the Thaumaturge path, the middle path here, the blue one. For tier 1s, we have Tempest Magic, 5 of 5. When your target is below 30% max hit points, you deal an additional 5% damage. It's a no-brainer. Malevolent Surge. When you kill a foe, you gain up to a 5% damage bonus for 15 seconds. 5 of 5 on that one. Tier 2s, we're going to skip. Snap Freeze, useless, 0 of 5. Destructive Wizardry, also useless for us, 0 of 5 little bit interesting in the tier 3s. Elemental Reinforcement, only 2 of 5. The reason for this being, when you cast a Fire, Arcane, Cold, or Lightning encounter, you can gain up to 5% increased damage for 10 seconds. Each element applies the bonus separately. With 2 points in it, that is a 2% damage bonus per elemental encounter power that we cast. However, we can only cast 3 elements. We can only cast Cold, Lightning, and Arcane. Once we do a full rotation, we have a 6% damage buff. That's pretty good. Spell Twisting. Now this is important. 5 of 5. Your encounter powers apply Spell Twisting for 10 seconds, which stacks up to 3 times. When you cast an at will power, your stacks of Spell Twisting are consumed to reduce the cooldown time on recharging powers. The cooldown is reduced by up to 10% per stack. So if you use your 3 encounter powers and then in at will, you reduce the cooldown of all your encounter powers by 30%. That's pretty good. That allows you to dish out a lot more DPS. Tier 4s. Far spell, useless. 0 of 5. Frozen power transfer. This is very important. 5 of 5. Chilling Cloud now grants an additional 5% bonus damage for every target you strike with the third strike. This bonus lasts for 20 seconds and stacks up to 3 times. Meaning that if you go through a full rotation of Chilling Cloud, on the third strike, if you hit 3 enemies with it, you would gain a 15% damage bonus for 20 seconds. It's a nice damage bonus. Well worth it. Tier 5. Transcend Master. Or Transcendent Master. Useless. We don't use pretty much any of the powers. 0 of 5. Elemental Empowerment. 5 of 5. The reason for this being, this is a very good source of damage for us. Dealing cold, cold damage has a 15% chance to apply Creeping Frost. Creeping Frost deals 85% of your weapon damage as cold damage every 2 seconds for 12 seconds. Dealing Arcane damage has a 15% chance to apply 
Warped Magics. Warped Magics deals 50% of your weapon damage as arcane damage every 2 seconds for 12 seconds. Warp Magic also ignores half of the target's damage resistance. These effects do not stack. You can apply both Creeping Frost and Warped Magics at the same time, but not multiple stacks of them. Last point, Assailing Force. Dealing damage to foes has a chance to grant you Assailant. When you have Assailant, your next encounter power deals 15% of the target's max HP as unresistible damage, max 800% of your weapon damage. This effect will only affect one target when used on a AoE, and this effect is half as effective and can be resisted or deflected when it's used against players in PvP. So that's your capstone. Now you're going to have about 13 points left, which we're going to go up into the Oppressor Paragon. Take 5 of 5 on Bitter Cold. Targets take 5% more damage for 6 seconds after being affected by Chill. Since all of our powers do Chill, that's pretty much a straight debuff that's on the enemies all the time. Chilling Control Sudden Storm now applies 5 stacks of Chill to targets hit by the primary strike. That's awesome. It allows us to almost instantly freeze targets. And the very last one, we're going to take 3 of 5 on Icy Veins. When you activate an encounter power, all foes within 15 feet of you gain up to 5 stacks of chill. Since we only have 3 points in it, that's going to mean that they gain 3 stacks of chill, which means you can instantly freeze targets within the use of 2 encounter powers. So go ahead and save that. Bam. Done. There's your feats. Now we're going to go over to powers. I do have 95 power points, don't worry about that due to the fact that once you reach level 70 you can over level and you can earn more power points than the basic like 71 that you have to start with and you can also now earn power points through the Sharandar campaign. So as you're leveling up your wizard you do have to spend points to uh, unlock the next powers and you can kind of throw those points in whatever you want. Magic Missile and Ray of Frost are okay in PvP. Chill Strike is a good spell for PvP and Icy Storm, so you're going to want those. But they're not really primary. So what I'm going to show you right now is just the primary ones that you keep on at most times. Conduit of Ice, if you use it, is going to be slotted in your RB slot. And you use this basically to apply stacks of chill, freeze targets, and proc storm spell. The reason why I don't have it on right now is I've been doing a lot of dungeons that require single target DPS, so I use Disintegrate. If you're doing mob dungeons, then you'll want to use Conduit of Ice. For dailies, we're going to use Oppressive Force. I use that as LB and X. This is the daily that you're going to use the most often if you're fighting more than one enemy. The other daily that I use is Ice Knife. I use this as LB and Y, and this is going to be your highest damage single target daily. So if you're fighting just a boss and there's no other enemies around, you're going to use Ice Knife instead of Oppressive Force. Now, for the personals, and this is where most of your damage comes from, we're going to use Storm Spell. This is the same as my old build, but this is very important. You always use it and get it to plus four as soon as possible. Shock your targets 30% of the time on a critical attack. Now, because we crit so often, we might as well always use this power. It's an insane amount of extra damage, and this is where the bulk of a lot of our damage comes from is Storm Spell. So we're going to keep that on at all times. In this build for over 3k item level, my second personal is Chilling Presence. Increase the damage you deal by 2% for each stack of chill on the target. This damage bonus is doubled on frozen targets. And at rank 4, you also get an additional uh, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2%. Two so you have a total of plus 8% damage per stack of chill on a target. And that bonus can double on a frozen target. It gives you a lot of extra damage. Those are your personals. For your at wills, your primary at will is going to be Chilling Cloud. Get that to plus four as soon as you can. Your secondary at will is going to be Storm Pillar, or you could use Ray of Frost, personal preference there. Um, you very rarely will use a, a left trigger encounter power anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. 
encounter powers that you are absolutely going to use. Icy Terrain. This is a constant. I always have this on. Uh, you freeze the ground around you. It's very good for putting down stacks of chill. And it's a dot damage power. So every dot, if it crits, has a chance to proc Storm Spell. I also use Sudden Storm. This is one of our highest damaging encounter powers. And if you're using Disintegrate, Sudden Storm will be in your RB slot. If you're using Conduit of Ice in your RB slot, Sudden Storm will be uh, in your regular spell tray. So I would say uh, I usually no use it on Y. It's a very good power. Then our last encounter power, um, or second to last, is going to be Steel Time. This is our other large damage dealing AoE power, and it's also an Arcane power. Uh, it's very good because it stuns enemies and it does a massive amount of damage. Our very last encounter power, and this depends on whether or not you're in a single target dungeon or you're in a AoE mob dungeon. So if you're in a single target dungeon like Lost Mouth, you're going to use Disintegrate. Disintegrate deals almost as much damage as Ice Knife because of how we have it buffed. It's a arcane power and it is a single target power. So it can deal a massive amount of damage. Plus it can insta-kill enemies that are below 280% of your weapon damage. So it's kind of a nice thing to have. You can actually disintegrate bosses. Now if you're going to go into PvP, I'm just going to show you what uh, PvP will be. I usually use shield in the RB slot. I see terrain as X. I'll keep my disintegrate uh, as Y. And then I will usually go up and use entangling force as B. And that's kind of my, my loadout. Uh, it just depends on exactly what team you're going in uh, with PvP for. So personal preference. Now, as you can see, I have all the other powers upgraded because I have the extra points, and you kind of just got to throw points in, in there to unlock the next set of powers. Ray of Enfeeblement is good as well, and the rest of them you can just put like one or two points in and play around with them, see if you like it. As you get more power points, you can upgrade them. So now that the powers are done, we're going to go ahead and move over to Boons. Boons covers... A tremendous amount of your damage. We have Sharandar, which is going to be really easy. We're going to go all the way across the bottom for it. Dark Fey Hunter, you gain an additional 400 power. Fey Precision, you gain an additional 400 critical strike. Elven Haste, you generate action points 3% faster. Elven Ferocity, when striking a foe, you have a chance to deal up to 20,000 arcane damage. And then Elvish Fury. When you kill a foe, you gain 135 power for 45 seconds. The buff stacks up to 30 times. Dreadring is going to be a little bit split up. You're going to take uh, Conjurer's Gambit, 250 critical strike and 250 movement. Then you're going to take Evoker's Thirst, 400 lifesteal. Forbidden Piercing, 3% resistance ignored. Shadow Touch, when dealing damage, you have a chance to deal up to 20,000 narcotic or necrotic uh, sorry, damage over a few seconds. This effect ends, and the target receives 25% less healing from spells for 10 seconds. So that's pretty good. And as your last boon, you're going to take Rampaging Madness. When you deal damage to a target, you gain a stack of madness. When you reach 50 stacks of madness, you gain 4,000 power, 4,000 lifesteal, and 4,000 regeneration for 10 seconds. After that 10 seconds, you can go back to earning stacks of madness. Very useful. Icewind Dell has a little bit not so much useful boons. You're going to take the first one on the bottom, Encroaching Tactics which is a 400 combat advantage bonus. Refreshing Chill, 400 stamina gain. Sleet Skills, 2% crit severity. Cool Resolve, you gain up to 2,000 power based on how much stamina or guard you are missing. And then for a very last one, you can either take Winter's Bounty, which is okay for dealing with mobs but not so good on bosses, 
or you can take Avalanche. I took Avalanche because it's a chance of dealing more damage. It doesn't work as well as it used to, but it still seems, in my personal preference, to be the best boon for there in Icewind Dell. For the Underdark campaign, you're going to take Primordial Might. You gain 400 power and 1600 maximum hit points. Primordial Focus, 400 crit, 1600 maximum hit points. Drow Ambush Tactics, Combat Advantage Damage Bonus is increased by 10%. That's very good. Dwarven Stamina, you now regenerate stamina 5% faster. This helps out with us teleporting around. And for a very last one, you're going to take Abyssal Strikes. You gain 10% more damage versus Demons. Now the Tyranny of Dragons campaign. I understand a lot of you may not have all of the boons unlocked in Tyranny of Dragons. I'm just going through and showing you. This way you know what you need for now. The first one you're going to take, Dragon's Claws, 400 power. Dragon's Gaze, 400 critical strike. Draconic Arm Breaker, 400 armor pen. Dragon's Blood, 400 regeneration. And then for the last three, you're going to put two into Dragon's Fury, which is going to give you 6.5% increased critical severity. And so you have a little bit more, uh, how do we put this, survivability. You're going to put one into Dragon's Thirst, which is granting you 3% increased lifesteal. So that's a 3% higher chance to steal life. If you're in a guild, you're going to want to use the Power Boon and the Defense Boon. For utility, it's up to you. I generally have XP gain on. And those boons will vary depending upon what rank the guild that you're in is. For the Maze Engine, this is the only campaign that I don't have completed at the moment, but I do know what I want. The first one you're going to take is Abyssal Siphoning. You gain 5% Lifesteal Severity. Demonic Influence, you gain 400 Combat Advantage. And then it's personal preference. I like Demonic Swiftness where you gain action points 10% faster. And for your last boon, pretty much the only one that's really good for us is this um, Bahamut's Might or something like that. When striking a foe, you have a chance to gain 2,000 critical strike bonus for 6 seconds. That's pretty much the best one there. I will have those boons done very shortly. Elemental Evil, pretty much the last campaign, very easy. You're going to take Wave of Force, 300 power, 2,000 maximum hit points. Heart of Stone, 4% lifesteal severity and 2,000 maximum hit points. Searing Aggression, you gain 400 critical strike and 2,000 maximum hit points. And then Gale of Retribution, when taking damage you have a chance to heal up to 24,000 maximum uh, HP over a few seconds and the effect ends you gain 1,000 Critical Strike for 10 seconds. That's the best buff we can get for a boon as a control wizard. And that's it for campaigns right now. That's all of your boons. Now let's look at companions. And this is why I say this build is for 3k item level and up. Because you're going to need a fair bit of currency due to the fact you're going to need one of three main companions. And this is going to be your summoned companion. Below 3k item level, you can use an Ion Stone. The Ion Stone grants you 100% of its stats to you. However, with Bonding Rune Stones and a Striker Companion, you can actually get 285% of that Companion's stats, in addition to its Legendary 15% bonus. Uh, so it's definitely worth using. The, once you can afford a Striker Companion... Which for the control wizard, it's either going to be the Zentarium Warlock, the Mercenary, or the Fire Archon. This is personal preference. This one, for my build right now, all I could afford was the Mercenary. The Zentarium Warlock, you have to get out of the Winter Festival, so they're very expensive. The Mercenary comes out of the Heirloom Pack, which costs 2,000 Zen. And the Fire Archon, you can buy off of the... Uh, auction house because it comes out of the trove of elemental evil so that fire archon is probably the cheapest one your main companion here is going to be that mercenary you have three offensive slots two ring slots and a waste for your offensive slots you're going to socket bondings ideally you want to have three rank 12 bondings 
all I could afford is a rank 12, a rank 11, and a rank 10. So I'm not getting the maximum bonus I could, but I'm still getting a pretty good bonus. I also finally pulled a plus 5 ring, which is a ring of sudden lifesteal. So I put that on the companion because every 30 seconds you gain 4,000 lifesteal for 10 seconds. Um, this effect only works in combat. And then in the offensive slots, I have a rank 12 Azor and a rank 9 Azor, which gives me 1,030 critical strike. That's awesome. I would recommend you use on your companion a plus 5 ring of sudden lifesteal and a plus 5 ring of ideally sudden precision or brutality if you could get them if you don't have plus five rings you can use plus four rings these come out of instances like castle never demogorgon epic demogorgon prophecy of madness and throne of the dwarven gods for my second ring i have a personalized adamant ring of recovery because it's giving me power and recovery and then in my offensive slots i get uh critical strike and my defensive slot, I have defense and deflect. Deflect is pretty much useless, though. As far as a waste goes, I have the Dragonflight Belt, which gives me, or the Dragonflight Assault Belt, and that gives me Critical Strike, Armor Pen, has a defense slot, which I have an Azor socketed there for just straight defense. The Fire Archon will give you possibly a little bit more damage because it has a Talisman slot, but the Talisman that you need that's double slotted is going to be around the cost of 1.2 to 1.6 million AD for it. So it's a very expensive item. That's why I'm using the Mercenary for now. Now, eventually I'll swap my Ion Stone out, probably for a Fire Archon or the Siege Master. I just have it here because I don't have either of those two companions. Another companion that you absolutely need, this is the Aranese of Belial. It starts off at blue and it comes out of the Scourge Warlock Booster Pack, which you buy off of the Zen Market. At blue, it gives you plus 5% critical hit severity, and when you upgrade it to epic, it gives you plus 10% critical hit severity. I also use the Cantankerous Mage. This is just a filler companion until I can get the Fire Archon or the Siege Master, but it gives me a 15% control bonus, which is pretty nice. Then we have the Air Archon, which you're going to want to keep and you're going to want to get to Epic because it increases your damage against targets that are not at full health by 5%, and each additional active Archon increases this bonus by half a percent. So as soon as a target takes damage, you're dealing 5% more damage to it, which is awesome. The Fire Archon does an additional percentage of damage to targets below half health, which is why I want to swap my Ion Stone for that. And the Siege Master just grants you an additional damage bonus all the time that's doubled when you go into the Guild Stronghold. So if you're doing heroic encounters in the Guild, you'll do more damage in there. As you can see on my Mercenary, I have 150 Deflect, 430 Defense, 394 Recovery, 1080 Armor Pen, 2563 Critical Strike, and 3211 Power. And I can get up to 285% of those stats. So that gives me a lot of stats. And this is after they fixed how the Bonding Stones work, where the Bonding Stones basically only proc once. They do not stack three times for each one that you have. That's why you want to use three of the same rank, so you get the maximum bonus. And eventually, maybe after the next double refinement, I'll be able to do that. So we've covered character, stats, powers, feats, boons, companions. Let's go ahead and cover mounts. This is the last thing, but very important. You can ride any mount that you want, and you can use whatever equip power that you have unlocked depending upon your mounts. For me, I can take 2,000 power, 2,000 armor pen, or 2,000 recovery. I'm a DPS class, so the 2,000 power is the best that I can take. For the mounts that I have equipped, I have three epic mounts, one rare mount, and then just one basic mount. And these give you a tremendous amount of bonuses. Now, I lucked out on my Heavy Twilight Nightmare, and it has the bonus that I want, which is Vampire's Craving. 
Whenever you perform a life steal, you are healed for 3% of your maximum hit points over 4 seconds. So for me, that's an extra 765 hit points every second. And that uses two Crescent Insignias and a Regal Insignia. So all of these insignias are boosting my defense and my incoming healing bonus. This is a bonus that just helps to keep you alive. Along with the Polar Bear, I got this one for Barbarian's Revelry. On critical hit, you are healed for 1.5% of your maximum hit points. So for me, that would be 1,529 hit points. And it seems to have about a one second cooldown, like it can only proc every second. So it doesn't proc on every single critical hit that you do, but it procs enough to definitely keep you healed up pretty quick. Eventually, maybe you might change it, but it would be personal preference. I like it a lot. And that's one Crescent Insignia and two Enlightened. So the Enlightened is giving me Regeneration and Control Resist, and then the other Enlightened is giving me Gold, Glory, and XP Gain and Maximum Hit Points. Now for my three damage dealing ones. Uh, the Winter Wolf, or what people call the Welfare Wolf, very easy to get. That one is a Barbed Insignia and an Enlightened Insignia. That gives you Magistrate's Restraint. Whenever you perform a critical strike, your target has a stack applied to it. And that stack uh, deals Psychic Damage equal to 10% of your power over 4 seconds. So that's 312 damage every second. It's just an additional dot that we apply to all the enemies that we crit. It would be better if you had the three stat version of that, but I don't have a legendary mount to replace it with. Uh, I would eventually try and get the legendary mount, either the Coastal Flail Snail for the 25% of your action point gain, or the Imperial Rage Drake for the 4,000 crit, but I haven't really decided on which one I want, and they're both very expensive. They're in the tens of millions, so... Uh, I'm not going to be getting one of those for a while. Next, I have the White Tiger with Protector's Camaraderie. When your companion attacks, you gain 3% of your power and defense for 10 seconds. This effect can stack up to 4 times. That uses 2 Regals and a Barbed. So the Regals give me power and companion influence. The Barbed gives me critical strike and combat advantage. And then I have the Leopard Occult. For the Artificer's Persuasion, whenever you use an artifact power, you gain recovery, movement, action point gain, and stamina gain are increased by 10% of your power for 15 seconds. So that would be 2,497 recovery, movement, action point gain, and stamina gain that I gain for 15 seconds every time I use an artifact, and that's very important. In that, you use a Barbed Insignia. Uh, illuminated insignia and then a second barbed insignia so i have one epic that gives me 200 crit strike and 100 combat advantage the illuminated gives me 100 lifesteal and plus 50 to lifesteal severity and then the blue barbed insignia skill gives me 100 critical strike and 50 combat advantage bonus you can get insignias from farming dungeons out of chests uh, certain lock boxes and then some you can even buy off of the tarmaloon trade house from other players We've covered everything except for gear. Let's go ahead and cover gear real quick. Now, like I said, I do not have full end game gear. I have mid to late game gear. Your artifact set is going to be the Valindra's set. So the Amulet of Valindra's Favor, the Belt of Valindra's Guard, and the Shard of Valindra's Crown. That's your artifact set. Using that artifact set, the belt is going to give you plus two intelligence, plus two charisma, and the set bonus itself is actually going to give you, unfortunately, <laughs> only 15% control bonus and control resist by 10%. So there really isn't a good set for the wizards right now, an ideal set. The Valindra set is the best one for its stats and for its bonus. For artifacts, you're going to want to use the Lantern of Revelation as your primary artifact. This gives you Critical Strike, Armor Pen, Combat Advantage bonus. And when you use it, you apply a 16% debuff to all the enemies around you for 6 seconds. You're also going to want to use the Thayan Book of the Dead because it gives you 1,000 Critical Strike, 1,000 Armor Pen, and 600 Action Point gain. And then you could use... The Sigil of the Controller, which would give you more offensive stats, but you would sacrifice survivability. 
So I use Belial's Portal Stone, which is 1,000 power, 1,000 life steal, and 600 control bonus. That artifact is pretty much made perfectly for the wizard. For gear on your character, uh, I have a plus 4 ring of brutality. If you had a plus 4 ring of precision, sudden precision, or you had plus 5 rings, the plus 5 rings would be the way to go. But since I don't have plus 5s, I have the plus 4 ring of brutality. Every 30 seconds, I gain 4,000 power. That means more damage. And I also have the personalized adamant ring of piercing, which gives me power and armor pen. And for offensive slots, I mostly use Azor enchantments, which give you critical strike. Defensive slots, you use a mixture of Azor enchantments for defense. And I think the other one I want to say is savage uh you use savage enchantments a couple of them in your defensive slots for extra hit points and lifesteal writing but it's kind of personal preference i also use one savage in a utility slot for the seven percent gold find and xp boost my other utility slots are dragon horde enchantments which uh, basically allow you to find refinement points a fey blessing enchantment which also allows you to find refinement points and then because i had it and i kind of like it the quartermaster's enchantment because it allows you to find profession resources as well as injury kits the rest of my gear is two pieces of elemental dragonflight that would be the head and then my arms are also elemental dragonflight. These two pieces of gear give us the highest crit. My armor is the burning executioner robes, and my boots are the burning executioner shoes. This gives us the best critical hit strike until you have lion's mane. Uh, unfortunately for me, the lion or the queue for stronghold siege in order to get lion's mane hasn't been working, so I don't have those two pieces of gear yet. Therefore, my stats can get even better. As far as a main hand offhand, you're going to want to use the Twisted set. The reason why you want to use the Twisted set is if you have both pieces of the set, every time you deal damage, you gain a stack, uh, basically, and that bonus gives you uh, Bloodlust every time you deal damage, which grants you 160 power and can stack up to 24 times. Every time you take damage, you gain a stack of Paranoia, and that can stack up to 24 times, and that gives you 160 defense. Now, every time you gain a stack of Bloodlust, you lose a stack of Paranoia. Every time you gain a stack of Paranoia, you lose a stack of Bloodlust. So it's a interesting set, but it's definitely the best set for... A, uh, a control wizard as far as a weapon enchantment you want to use a transcendent dread because the dread makes it so that your encounter powers strike with an additional 75 percent critical hit severity your attacks cause the target uh or cause dread in the target for four seconds dealing 50 percent of your weapon damage as necrotic damage every second and reducing their defense by 40 percent for players decreasing their damage resistance by four percent for monsters additionally at transcendent your critical strikes now reduce the target's damage resistance by four percent for four seconds that effect can trigger every five seconds so basically Four seconds, their damage is reduced by 4%, then one second, it's normal, then the next four seconds, you're back to having that debuff on there. For artifact powers, you're going to want to have the one for Chilling Cloud, where Chilling Cloud adds 60% additional chance to apply a stack of chill to nearby targets on all casts of Chilling Cloud. And then for the Talisman, the Talisman, you're going to want the one for Storm Spell. Storm Spell now has a 5% chance to deliver an additional strike. And for your other stat, you're ideally going to want either Combat Advantage Bonus or you're going to want um, Action Point Gain. But it just depends on what you roll because it's random. You also can upgrade this, but... Uh, it really takes a lot of cubes of augmentation to get it maxed out, so that's why I don't have it maxed out. Right now, I just have the 100 AoE resist because that's the last one that I rolled. For my shirt and pants, uh, my pants, I use the Gemmed Exquisite Elemental Pants. That's the best that you can get, item level 145. 
and my shirt i just haven't been able to afford the gemmed exquisite version yet so i use the drowcraft tunic which is item level 135 and gives me hp power and defense plus it has the offense slot which i have an azor rank 9 socketed in your fashion set doesn't matter it's whatever you want to use so that pretty much covers everything about the build now as far as buffs you can use one potion so we can use a superior elixir of accuracy that gives us a thousand crit you can use one food item so we'll use squash soup which gives you a uh, critical hit chance increase by three percent critical hit severity increased by five percent and if you really wanted to and you had them you can go into the vault of piety and you can buy the wild storm elixir that elixir is pretty insane because it also gives you critical hit and critical hit severity and you can use all of those potions and buffs at one time Hopefully you guys enjoyed the guide. I'm going to also post this build as kind of a written format. Hopefully MMO Minds is going to approve it, but I'm going to go ahead and submit it to them. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, make sure you leave a comment. Otherwise, please go ahead and like the video and share it. It greatly helps out with the searchability of videos here on YouTube. And I will catch you all with my very next build. I hope you enjoy and just go ahead and melt everything in your path. Thanks for watching.